you cannot tell, I am unhappy with the concept of goals and objectives. So let's do a little person here. And then you've got the goal that you want to get to. My thinking on that has changed. I'm not sure that's a neurodivergent thing. I just don't think a lot of the time they make sense. Hello. Oh my god. I've got a really intense energy right now. <laughs> And I've been mentally uh, preparing the content for this video on my walk from the station, from my commute, home, and I wish I'd taken my camera with me because I could have just recorded it and vlogged it on the beautiful 25 minute walk along the river between the station and my house. But I didn't bring my camera, so I couldn't. So I want to capture it before I lose it. How do we sit for this intensity? I think there's going to be a whiteboard. There's going to be some stuff. There's going to be things going on. Time waits for no one. In my last video, um, I was using the Lego Serious Play method to help me kind of overcome some internal blockers about what was stopping me from taking action when it came to my YouTube channel. And something that continuously comes up for me around that is like setting goals and how to do that in a way that doesn't ultimately make me feel like I have failed. So I wanted to record a video for you on this topic, going through how I'm going to set my June goal. But I just have this fundamental issue <laughs> with goal setting. Between the ages of like 20 to 26, I went in hard on the goals. I was all about self-development. Yeah, like set this goal for all these areas of my life. I'm striving, striving to achieve. And it just continuously like knocked my confidence and self-esteem as I continued to not achieve those goals. Yes, okay, undiagnosed ADHD definitely had a huge part to do with that. This is why I'm kind of at a point where I'm like, I don't want to set goals in the way that I've done it before because it doesn't work. And fundamentally, I don't think it really works for anyone. I feel like people are just pretending like they get it. So I had this thing tootling around in my brain about how I wanted to do like anti-goals, like not exactly goals. And I was on my way home from work and I thought, let's listen to a podcast. So I scrolled through and I found an Adam Grant podcast with a person that I should have looked at before I sat down to do this video. Handy transition. Woo! So it's an Adam Grant podcast uh, with NFL linebacker Emmanuel Acho. I don't know this person. I'm not... NFL follower. It was called The Problem With Setting Goals. And I was like, yes, I'm here for it. Let's listen, let's see what other people have to say. And I wrote down a few nuggets. I'm gonna take you on the thought process that I went through because it has been a thought process over the last hour. The problem with goals is that they give a kind of rigid, specific direction and they also limit us. So if you're only aiming for a specific thing, it kind of puts a limit on what you can achieve with that thing and kind of narrows us in and closes us off to other possibilities, which I thought was quite interesting. But then he said something I really liked, which was objectives are energy aimed in a direction. I was like, great, okay. So let me think about my goals or my objectives in terms of energy aimed in a direction. I didn't realize that's what an objective was. So I went to ChatGPT and I asked it to define what an objective is. And it sounded to me like what a goal was. And so I was like, is there any difference between an objective and a goal here? Because I know I'm just talking about semantics here, but if you've worked within an organization, like loads of organizations do, right? You have your objectives or you have goals, you have specific like performance indicators, you set your OKRs, your objectives and key results. And this is something that has always baffled me. Like I just cannot get my head around the lineage or the way that objectives flow into goals that flow into key results. And it baffles my head. And I will admit that embarrassingly or not embarrassingly as somebody that works as a learning and development person in a career development space who is constantly advising and supporting and helping people to set smart goals i do not understand smart goals i don't i just i don't get it right i've always had that problem so when i got diagnosed with adhd i was like oh i get that now because i struggle to converge all of my thinking is wants to expand and go like this so maybe the reason why i struggle to set goals and smart goals and spe uh, specifically is because they want you to converge and get specific about things. My thinking on that has changed. I'm not sure that's a neurodivergent thing. I just don't think a lot of the time they make sense. I started researching because I was like, ChatGPT is wrong, right? So this is what ChatGPT said to me. Sidebar, I asked ChatGPT something the other day and it gave me some wrong information. And so I told it it was wrong. And then it came back and was like, I apologize. Um, it seems that I have collected the wrong information or something like that. And then I felt bad. I felt guilty that it was apologizing. And that there is a lesson in having too many feelings. So I said, what is an objective? ChatGPT refers to a specific goal or outcome that an individual organization or project aims to achieve, blah, blah, blah. So then I said, okay, because it started talking about objectives being smart. What's the difference between a goal and objective? They are often used interchangeably, but there is a subtle difference. 
A def by definition, a goal is a broad statement that describes a desired outcome or result. And it's generally more kind of broad and vague. So much information. Hierarchy, goals are typically set at a higher level and then objectives are then used and derived from the goals to split it into measurable components. So goals provide an overarching direction or purpose while objects are the specific measurable steps. Did I miss a memo on that one? I thought it was objectives then goals or people use them interchangeably. I know it's just semantics, but I, just, I don't really know if any of it makes sense. And we use all of the terms interchangeably and we rely on them so specifically to be like, I am going to set a direction for where I want to go. And this is what that's going to look like. And then we continuous, continuously, then we continuously fail at them. If you cannot tell, I'm unhappy with the concept of goals and objectives. So what is the solution? This is what I want to figure out. And I think we need a whiteboard and I have one. <laughs> Takes me back to when I was an infant school teacher and I would spend many, many, many more much times than should be required trying to locate the whiteboard pens that I'd just been using and didn't know where I'd put them. <laughs> People should let women have clothes with pockets in. Like why do women, like why, that's a thing. I would wear dungarees constantly now if I was still a teacher. Anyway, other fun fact is I used to store my pens in my ponytail when I didn't have a pocket. And then I'd be like constantly losing my pen. And at the end of the day, I'd get home and I'd have like three biros in my ponytail. <laughs> okay, so this is my issue with the goal, right? You've got you right now that is looking towards something that you want to achieve, right? So let's do a little person here. And then you've got the goal that you want to get to. If a goal is aiming for an end result, what happens when you reach the goal? And I'll give you an example. This is me at the start of January. I, having been burned a lot of times in the past with my relationship with goal setting and failure, was really nervous to set myself a goal for YouTube, but I decided that I was like emotionally ready for it. So I set myself a goal. Maybe it's a goal, maybe it's an objective, maybe it's a key result. Who the fuck knows at this point? I wanted to have a, a thousand subscribers by the end of 2023. Like that was like, felt like a slightly kind of unattainable, how am I gonna get there goal. I had a thousand subscribers by the end of January. Casual flex which blew my mind. But then my instinct having reached the goal was to be like, well, I guess we make the goal bigger. Like what is a bigger number to reach by the end of the year? Now I kind of have a problem with that because if all we ever do when we reach a goal is extend the goal, when do we ever feel like we're done? We're like just constantly on this rat race of like chasing things. I also didn't really learn, well, I was about to say I didn't really learn anything about getting to that goal because it kind of happened accidentally, but maybe that's a lesson in itself and something that I'm going to take into my June goal planning, which is like, if it's working, why am I changing it or fixing it or trying to do something different? The other issue that I have with goals here, especially as somebody with ADHD, is that we have us in the present and then we have this like hazy, confusing future thing that we want to get to that doesn't really make sense in time, but we know we want to get there. And then what we're supposed to do is map out some kind of plan or course or activity or structure to help ourselves get there. And I don't know about you, but then what I do is I get really tied to having to follow those steps. So I'm like, well, I gotta do this. And then I gotta do this, 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 this. And for one, that's not how life works for everyone. We wanna remain adaptable and kind of go with the flow, but it kind of just creates this tunnel vision of like, I think that's how the steps that I've got to take. And when you're somebody that struggles to like put things into a linear format, lines, <laughs> It kind of just like, it already feels off. And then you're having to follow a plan and yes, okay, go with the flow and be adaptable. But then when you veer off course, but your end goal is here, you have to constantly like reroute yourself in a linear fashion back to the goal. I don't know if this is making any sense, but I'm on one with the pen. So here's where I currently am, I think, when it comes to goal setting. And I say, I think, because I don't know what I'm gonna say yet. We're just, you're just coming on the journey with me. And I'm gonna talk quite short term here. Like I'm thinking about June. And I know part of the point of goal setting is that you want to have a direction or an end point or something that you're aiming for. But I think this will make sense in the context of like the longer term. If I'm thinking about June, right? There are some things that I want to do. And the emphasis on that is the want. <laughs> I am choosing to do them because I want to do them. For me personally in June, there are some things that I need to learn. That's what came off the back of my video. I'll link it above when I was trying to understand my blockers to these videos. I'm, I'm finding it hard to do some of the things that I want to do because there are just some things that get in the way of me just finding it easy to like pick up my camera, let everything spill out of me. Like there's some little things that I just want to learn and figure out. 
Honestly, you think that I make this shit up for effect, but I just got interrupted by the fact that my memory card <laughs> was full, so the video stopped. And this is what I mean about some things that I need. I say like skills and capability, but I also just mean like organizationally getting my shit together that are preventative from me doing what I want to do. Like the enablers, we're calling them enablers. Right. There's also on my carefully crafted whiteboard, the third point. So we've got things that I want to do, things that I need to learn. I'm going to put learn slash, I might change that to learn slash do, because they're kind of enablers for the other thing. There are ways that I want to do it. And there are ways that I want to feel about it. Can we just use this as like a goal setting framework? No, not goals. We don't like the word goals. If any of you have any ideas about what to call this that isn't goal setting, please, because I'm stumped as to how to like capture it in a succinct way. But essentially what I'm talking about there is some things that I want to do, some things that I need to do slash learn, some ways that I want to do it and some ways that I want to feel. And I say ways that I want to do it because for me, and I think lots of you will feel the same, especially if you're somebody who has kind of felt like you've had to force yourself to do things a certain way for so long. If I'm hitting a metric goal of 100,000 subscribers, but I've not achieved that in a way that I want to do it, to me, I have not met that goal. Like that is not what is important. And actually a great thing that the guy I mentioned earlier said on the podcast was around like living a life of significance, not one of success. And I think part of that is doing it in a way that works for you. So ways that you want to do it and ways that I want to feel. I don't want to achieve that goal at the detriment to my own health. I don't want to achieve that goal by like shitting on other people. And I think that's really important. So does the end result really matter? Like if I spend the whole of June or the rest of the year doing the things that I want to do, doing some things that I need to do to enable those things, doing it in the way that I want to do it and feeling the way that I want to feel about it. Does it really matter what you get to? Now I'm aware with the first two points, doing some things that you want to do and need to do, that's kind of where the goal setting or like getting specific about what that is gets a bit tricky, right? Like that's kind of the point of having a goal is that you know where you're headed and you know what the steps are that you need to take. So I'll show you what mine looks like, but I think we can keep it simple. For me, I don't, I, should, I don't know why I tried to talk while I had a pen lid in my mouth. For me, the thing that I want to do, I'm talking about June specifically, is one YouTube video a week. So I'm talking just about YouTube here. I want to release one YouTube video a week. It just feels good to me. I'm excited about it. It's a commitment that I will feel proud of. It is a commitment, I'll be honest, that I would have very struggled to stick to before I was medicated. So take that as you will. But I feel good about that being the one thing that I want to do. In terms of things that I need to do, this is what I kind of uncovered in my last video was around those enablers. I haven't written the full list yet, but I know that looks something like sort out my hard drive with all of my videos on, work out how to use my camera settings so I don't keep accidentally doing things and then like wasting the time that I've recorded a video and then realized it was in slow motion and then I didn't have any sound on it explore some different like video editing technique. But I'm gonna do that within the context of the thing that I wanna do, which is the four videos. So how can I, as I do each video, bring some of the need to do's into that so that it's kind of like has purpose in a context. Cause I know I'm not somebody that's gonna sit down and like read the manual or even watch a YouTube video about how to use my camera if it's not in the context of creating a video. In terms of ways that I wanna do it and ways that I wanna feel about it, I just wanna shout out to Ben who left a comment on my last video, the Lego Serious Play, what stopped me from taking action one because I looked at that yesterday as I was mapping out like my goals for YouTube for my videos for the month and it and I was getting in my own head because I was getting stuck in like how do I do this strategically and maybe I should start thinking about how I'm going to grow my audience and like how do I do it in a way that um other people say that I should do it and I read your comment Ben and I was like oh this is just reminding me the whole point of what I'm doing and I want to do it in the way that I want to do it and this is the whole point of it so thank you for that and ultimately, how do I want to feel? I don't know, actually. That's the one thing I've not thought about yet. How do I want to feel? I think I want to feel satisfied that I have done things in the way that I want to do them. And that I've approached it from a place of exploration and curiosity. And I've, I don't, I've kind of gone, I hope on a related tangent to the topic of goals here, but kind of my point here is that if you want to explore and discover and figure out the best things for you and what works and what doesn't and how to get there. I think setting a goal is actually detrimental to that point of exploration because if you are to go for a walk and you know where you're aiming for, you'll probably pick 
the quickest path to get there, right? Because you're like, this is where we're going to go. But when you're working on a goal, like, you can't see what's around you, so you can't pick the quickest path, or you think that you can quick the pick, quick the pickest, pe 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 Peter Piper Pepper. You think that you can pick the quickest path, but you actually just can't. So like, why don't we all just meander around for a little while, use those four anchors. What do I want to do? What do I need to do? How do I want to do it? And how do I want to feel? And maybe we don't need goals. I don't know. What do you think? Does this make sense? Let me know in the comments as always. And if you're not subscribed, please do.